Autophagy was very popular a few years ago. One of my most popular videos in the past talked about the subtle details of this important process for longevity. If you're not aware, then autophagy is the process of cell recycling that removes old, worn out organelles and waste material. With age, junk material accumulates in the cells, which promotes many age related diseases and accelerated aging. Since 2021, disabled autophagy has been deemed to be one of the new hallmarks of aging. In fact, autophagy affects all the other hallmarks of aging, such as protein homeostasis, mitochondrial dysfunction, and genome stability. As of 2023, there are 12 hallmarks of aging in total, and autophagy has a major role in all of them. In this video, I'm going to give you the most updated overview of autophagy. Make sure you click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. In 2016, Dr. Yoshinori Oshumi was rewarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for discoveries of the mechanisms for autophagy. Autophagy translates into self-eating and it describes the cell's ability to recycle and eliminate different cell particles, such as old, worn-out mitochondria, viruses, bacteria, organelles, etc. Autophagy has many important roles in health, such as it protects against age-related muscle loss, it promotes insulin sensitivity, and effective autophagy has been seen to promote insulin resistance. Autophagy lowers inflammation by engulfing inflammatory Zones. Autophagy removes protein aggregates in the brain. Early stages of Alzheimer's show deficient autophagy. Autophagy manages the immune system, a phenomenon called immunophagy. Impaired autophagy contributes to arterial aging. Autophagy helps with non-alcoholic fatty liver and alcoholic liver disease by clearing lipid droplets. Autophagy helps to maintain genomic stability, which is a hallmark of aging. And lastly, autophagy maintains NAD levels and autophagy deficiency promotes fatal NAD depletion. The process of mitophagy describes mitochondrial autophagy that removes defective mitochondria. Mitochondrial dysfunction is one of the main drivers of aging and a big hallmark of aging. All aged cells accumulate junk material and not being able to clear them out is a hallmark of aging. Autophagy appears to be the central component of the longevity the benefits of calorie restriction. Calorie restriction is one of the only known ways to extend lifespan in other animals. Mice and yeast that are defective in autophagy don't live longer despite consuming fewer calories, whereas sufficient autophagy allows these effects to take place. It's been observed that autophagic activity declines with age, which may have implications in age-related diseases and longevity. So, maintaining higher autophagy can help with longevity and increasing health span. A 2014 study found that centenarians aged 100 to 104 had significantly higher levels of an autophagy gene called Becklin-1 compared to healthy young controls between the ages of 27 and 39. Another 2018 publication discovered that several autophagy genes were upregulated in a group of 76 centenarians. So, people who live extremely long have higher levels of autophagy, and autophagy appears to be a central component to the longevity benefits of calorie restriction. So if you enhance and maintain these autophagy pathways, then you can effectively delay aging and age-related diseases. However, excessive or dysfunctional autophagy has also been implicated in certain pathologies such as cancer, bacterial infections, and enhanced tumor cell fitness. Basically, when cancer cells and malignant cells are put under nutritional stress, then they hijack autophagy for their own survival. So there are some situations, specifically in certain malignancies, where autophagy isn't a good thing. However, for otherwise healthy people, autophagy appears to have some beneficial effects in preventing age-related diseases. Now that we know what autophagy is, how do you activate or increase it? One of the biggest misconceptions about autophagy is that you need to fast for three days to activate it. The truth is autophagy is happening all the time to different degrees. During some parts of the day it rises and at other decreases, depending on the signals your body receives. The key to increasing autophagy is physiological stress and energy depletion. When you're exercising, or experiencing calorie restriction, you activate an energy sensor called AMPK, which then leads to the activation of autophagy. Just eight weeks of aerobic exercise has been seen to attenuate the decline in autophagic activity in elderly subjects. Certain dietary phytonutrients and polyphenols like EGCG from green tea activate AMPK and increase autophagy. Other ingredients that increase autophagy include coffee, cruciferous vegetables, anthocyanins in berries, olive oil, omega-3 fatty acids, ginger, and curcumin. So autophagy isn't a binary on and off switch. Instead, it's more of like a degree-dependent state, depending on your energy status. The major inhibitor of autophagy is mTOR, or mammalian target of rapamycin, which is a major growth switch in the body. 
mTOR is the main growth pathway that's responsible for muscle protein synthesis, neurogenesis, wound healing, and insulin sensitivity. You turn on mTOR with things like protein, specifically animal protein like meat and dairy, carbohydrates like sugar and starch, as well as saturated fat found in butter or lard. Hyperactivation of mTOR is implicated in many chronic diseases, such as cancer, diabetes, obesity, and neurodegeneration, as well as aging. That's why it's important to balance mTOR with autophagy. You don't want to have too much of either of these things. You need both for health and longevity, as not enough mTOR could also promote frailty, muscle loss, and dementia. Not enough autophagy, on the other hand, can also cause accelerated aging and increase the risk of certain diseases. So how do you balance these two? The main principle, in my opinion, is cycling between different food options as well as your meal timing. Instead of eating only animal protein, cycle it with plant-based proteins. Instead of eating only six times a day, eat only two times a day on some days. Instead of being in a calorie surplus all the time, be in a calorie deficit at other times. This way, your body maintains a balance between these two important pathways. What I do personally is intermittent fasting pretty much most of the day because not eating increases autophagy quite a lot. I also consume coffee and teas in my fasting window. Then after after exercise, I consume carbohydrates and protein to promote recovery and tissue repair. The human body doesn't really do well in abundance. We need this small amount of stress and energy depletion to activate these beneficial pathways. Exercise, calorie restriction, intermittent fasting, and dietary polyphenols turn on different longevity pathways, but too much of them can be also harmful. I'm having my retreat again in India at a longevity clinic called IWO. It includes measuring 180 biomarkers, fitness tests, DEXA scan, full body MRI, echocardiogram, ultrasound, physiotherapy, and any other test that you want. All of that in a five-star hotel, the Leila Palace, under the supervision of 130 medical professionals. If you want to join me at the retreat, then check out the link in the description for when I'm going there next. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.